This is my sixth Mother's Day sermon here. Six of them. No pressure at all there. But Gary, we're carrying on in Matthew. Yeah, well, that seemed like the best thing to do if we're going to finish it between now and next week, which we can't possibly do. Last week we looked at chapter 11, and um, it's just fun. It's been fun looking at Jesus. We're going to skip ahead in chapter 12 to a situation where Jesus has some interaction, or lack thereof, with his mother. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 46. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother's his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, "Your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you." He replied, "Who is my mother and who are my brothers?" Pointing to his disciples, he said, "Here are my mother and my brothers for Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Not very encouraging, is it? I mean, Mom and the boys came to see Jesus. As far as we know, they're still living in Nazareth. Jesus somewhere around Galilee, the Gentiles, right? And there's a lot going on. Jesus has picked fights with the religious people. They pick fights with him. By this point, they're telling him that he's basically Satan, okay, that he's Beelzebub. And things are going hot and intense, and there's a huge crowd there. And they come to him, and as far as we know from Matthew, Jesus doesn't go out and talk to him. He doesn't. Can you imagine your mom coming? All that way, and you know, someone comes and tells you, oh, your mom's out there. And you don't go talk to her? This is perplexing. This is very disturbing. And thankfully, we have some clues in another text. If you go over to Mark chapter 3, this will be up on the board there. Mark chapter 3. It says here, When Mark tells the story, before we get to that point where they come, he gives us some background. Okay, um, and I'll get to it for a second. There we go. In verse 20, Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. For they said, he's out of his mind. That is the background for what we read in Matthew chapter 12. Things were so busy, so hectic that Jesus couldn't eat. And of course, what's the Jewish mother worry about more than anything else? Yeah, he's not eating, right? And so their thought was, he's lost his mind. He doesn't know what he's doing. And so... We need to go and we need to take charge. Oops. Oops. Yeah, oops. Did mom need to come take charge? Jesus knew what he was doing. Did he need mom? Wow. Wow, Gary, this is not a cool sermon. I mean, on Mother's Day, you're supposed to talk about all the things that mothers do and all the things they do right. Mary blew it. Jesus didn't seem very happy about it, did he? Who's my mother and brothers? Those who do the will of my father my mother and brothers. Let me tell you about another story. When Jesus was 12, Jesus was 12, the whole family went down to Jerusalem for the Passover. All right, this story's in Luke, Luke chapter 2, right? And they did the Passover thing, and the family packed up and left, but guess who got left behind? Jesus. You know how long it took before they figured out Jesus wasn't with them? A day. You know how long it took before they found him? Three days. 
Can you imagine? Can you imagine as a mother what you'd feel like if you left your 12-year-old someplace for three days and didn't know where he was? Oops. Wow. That'd be a hard one to live down, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know who told that story to Luke? Mary did. She told him that story. Let me tell you about another story on John. John chapter 4, okay? Beginning of the ministry. Jesus is just starting out. He's called some disciples to him. He's teaching them. He gets invited to a wedding. He goes to a wedding. And for some reason, Mary's in charge of the wine because she must have been related to it or something. But they run out of wine. And so, she fingers Jesus. He'll fix it. And you know what Jesus says? It's not my time yet. It's not. This is, no. This isn't. And so he fixes it. And you know the very first miracle that we have on record for Jesus? Is turning water into wine. Was that Jesus' plan? No. He clearly says, not my time. Don't. All right. Three stories. How's Mary doing? Doesn't look good, does it? Doesn't look good at all. Now, Gary, why are you talking about this? Well, we have a tendency, especially as religious people, when we get religious, to make our parents into saints. Don't we? My mom's saintly. She's just the most amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, saint, 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 saint. Usually it's in past tense when they're gone. But you know what your Bible does? It paints a different story. A different story about Jesus and his relationship with his mom and how well Mary is doing in supporting Jesus in his ministry. At one time, she's going to call an end to it because he's gone off the rocker. He's lost his mind. I need to go tell Jesus how to do ministry. I need to tell Jesus how to minister to these people. I need to tell. I need to take, I need to take over. Wow. Tell you one more story. It's over in John. John chapter 19. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, we have seven sayings. Things that we have recorded that he said. And he was on the cross for some time. Okay? But in verse 26, one of the last things that he does and takes care of, it says in verse 26, When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, that would be John, he said to his mother, here's your son. And to the disciple, here's your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing it all was now completed, and so that his scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, but the sponge put the sponge on, his, on a stalk of the hyssop plant, lifted to Jesus' lips. When he received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his life. One of the last things that Jesus took care of in his life, his mom. His mom. Had Jesus gotten over the, you lost your mind? Yeah. Did he somehow get past that terrible, 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 Seeing that when he was 12 years old and he was out of his parents' sex for 12, did he, three days, did, did he get over that? Did he get over the fact that, that she had him do the first miracle? It wasn't what he really wanted to do. Did he, did he forgive her? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Happy Mother's Day. 
you're forgiven. You're forgiven. It's all okay. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all those mistakes that you made, you know you've made. All these things you wondered, that have, 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 I, have I emotionally crippled my child by what I did? Did, did that decision really mess them up? You know, and the things that, that, that cause you to lose sleep and, and the things that you don't really want to talk about, those are the things you're forgiven of. Remember when you sounded like your mom and you swore you would never say that? Do you remember that? I will never, ever say that to my child. I will never make my child feel that way. And you found those things coming out of your mouth? You're forgiven. You're forgiven. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. But here's the caveat. There's a caveat. You have to forgive your mother. And you have to forgive your mother's mother. And you have to give, forgive your husband's mother. You've got to forgive. And you've got to let it go. You gotta let it go. You know, it speaks volumes that Jesus put John in charge, doesn't it? Folks, if you don't know that, James is of age, his brother. Judas, the one that wrote the book, Jude, is of age. There's another one, Joseph. Why didn't Jesus put them in charge? We don't know. We can only speculate. But he took care of mom. He let her know. You're forgiven. You are forgiven. Happy Mother's Day. You're forgiven. Now, for the rest of us who are trying to honor our mothers, for the rest of us, and all of us have had mothers and grandmothers, you need to forgive them. You need to let it go. Let it go. It's been festering inside of you for a long, long time. And yeah, you may be justified in your anger, and you may be just, let it go. Happy Mother's Day, you're forgiven. Happy Mother's Day. And to celebrate that, we're going to take that common meal. And as you remember what Jesus did for you, Happy Mother's Day, you're forgiven. And Happy Mother's Day, I forgive my mom, my grandmother. I forgive because Jesus taught me to do that. Happy Mother's Day. And then when we're finished that, we can go have some cake. But before we do that, we're going to sing. We're going to sing a song, prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. Let's stand together and sing.